So this will be a new and improved version of the presentation that I already uploaded. Uh, this will be part one. It's a little bit longer this time. So all of the cosmological powers will undoubtedly show their faces at one point or another during the course of this presentation, but these three lured my imagination most. Seamlessness, centration, and interrelatedness. And I've subtitled this talk, From None to One to Many, and hopefully the meaning of this phrase will become clearer as we go along. In the beginning was an infinitely fertile womb, an all-nourishing abyss, a nothingness so full of potential that it was unable to contain itself. A full emptiness may not make much rational sense. Nonetheless, there was a virgin birth, and from none came one. From the void emerged the cosmos. But then, amidst this young cosmos, occurs another miracle, the emergence of particles individual centers of autopoetic agency, always already in communion with each and every other. The one that came from none becomes many. What you see here is a simulation of a cloud of hydrogen atoms about a light year across. We're going to watch them seek one another out over the course of 260,000 years. Astrophysicists call this ancient love of matter for itself gravity. Perhaps this is the original meaning of falling in love. Now, out of this atomic lovemaking, something brand new begins to emerge. Stars. But this stellar nursery is no playground. This is a deadly dance, constantly hovering at the edge of chaos and creativity. Individual stars actually begin to compete with one another for matter. Some are ejected before they even have enough fuel to ignite, becoming brown dwarfs. Others are destroyed by colossal impacts or swallowed by massive plasma vortexes. But the creative process is relentless. Countless shining beings are formed from the fecundity of atomic interrelatedness and are flung into the privacy of a space all their own. But these freshly spun stars won't be lonely long. Out of the halo of gas and rock still surrounding their core, planets emerge to receive the radiant gift offered by their solar parent. So to recap, from the empty fullness of the quantum vacuum came the cosmos, within which emerged the first atomic beings whose love for one another made the stars. From none, seamlessness, to one, centration, to many, interrelatedness. This mysterious trinity is still active upon the earth between we earthlings. Each of us represents a recapitulation of the original emergence of the universe from the creative womb. We come into the world as individuals and yet we are always already related to one another. How are we, how am I, both one and many? In chapter three of the universe story, Brian Swim discusses what's called the Pauli exclusion principle. This principle simply states that no two particles can occupy the same state. This principle can be said to assure the irreducible reality of the individual, not only at the quantum level, but also at our human level. 
but there is a further principle applying to such individuals, the second law of thermodynamics. This law reflects the need that individuals have, whether atoms or human beings, for a continual flow of energy. Any being that fails to exchange energy with its environment will very quickly decay and dissolve. For human beings, this energy exchange includes our intersubjective presence among one another and the rest of the Earth community, a topic we will return to later. So we are both separate and united, both individual and interdependent. To understand this paradox, we have to delve deeper into the bizarre beginnings of our universe. The explosion we witnessed at the start of this presentation is an inadequate facsimile of the Big Bang, because there was not yet an outside perspective from which to view this most creative of moments. Both space and time themselves emerged from the quantum vacuum. Strangely then, there really is no outside to our universe. Nor is there a beginning in time, at least not one that isn't still occurring now. Naturalist Lauren Isley has written that the human is the loneliest being on Earth. Our special mode of self-conscious experience, itself an astonishing achievement of cosmic creativity, has become, in the industrial era, a force leading to increased isolation from the universe that birthed us. We've gained untold amounts of technological knowledge about our universe as a result of this self-consciousness, yet somehow each new advance in power and control takes us further away from feeling at home. In an attempt to reconcile this alienation, to heal this wound, let us revisit our experience of the beings we call stars. Our own sun provides us with a model for how the intense centration manifest in human self-consciousness might overcome itself. Perhaps we can learn vicariously. The intensity of centration displayed in the self-actualization of the sun is mirrored by the centration generating our special type of subjective reflectivity. The matter making up the sun loves itself so deeply that it cannot help but transcend itself, overflowing in radiance, showering light and warmth upon our planet, giving it life. If a being as massive as the sun is capable of such a miracle, there's no doubt that you and I are as well. I'm going to stop here and you'll see part two next.